Hey, happy Friday. We made it. I'm Deb, my main gardens, and it's favorite flower Friday time. Each week, every Friday during the season, I like to talk about favorite flower, maybe some things that are happening in the garden, maybe what the plans are for the weekend, and just kind of check in and see how you're doing. So, this week's pick is a perennial. It is uh, a perennial I planted, I don't know, four years ago, and I've had great success with it, and I love it. It is the blanket flower. Can you, I mean, look at that. That is art. And here's what it looks like after it's gone by. Little pom-pom. And I'm gonna take you out, say till the end of the video, and show you um, what it looks like in my gardens and how much the bees love it. That's one of the reasons I love the blanket flower. A couple of other reasons I love it. It's a mounding perennial. So it's kind of like a night, got sort of, I can't talk, a nice bushier shape rather than a, a big spreader. Like how I did that, big spreader. <laughs> uh, and I also love it for its bloom time. It started blooming in July and it will go right through fall. And it's just got those beautiful colors that um, are just a nice transitional flower from summer into the fall. I've got it in a sunny spot. I give it um, uh, an organic granular fertilizer in early in the season, in the spring. And a couple of times this year, I've um, uh, done a little foliage um, fish fertilizer and it seems really happy um, then the other thing I do is I will go out and um, after the blooms go by I will deadhead these and more will keep coming so I've got some deadheading to do this weekend as you will see so I will take you out there again and show you um, what's happening but yeah blanket flower love it add it to your list of perennials you must have um, if you don't already uh, so it was an interesting garden week this week because we had we had this storm and I know there have been storms all over the country and um, many places had it a lot worse than here in Maine but we had three inches overnight tons of rain and heavy 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 rain so um, I don't have to water for a while and um, but I have some cleanup to do on aisle five because some of my mulch just kind of got pushed out um, of the bed. So I've got to do some cleanup this weekend. The vegetable gardens are looking good. Um, I did have some powdery mildew, which I expected given all the rain. And we had a lot of humidity prior to that. Um, so thanks, uh, plug to my friend Melissa at Sprague's Nursery. I'm using a copper fungicide, which has really helped to control that. And I've also trim some of the lower leaves in my squash plants, um, around my squash plants and zucchini to, to help with airflow and to help prevent the built, you know, powdery mildew. But still, I had a couple of leaves that, um, if you're not familiar with powdery mildew, it looks like baby powder all over the leaves. Uh, and I just, I just cut them out and it was fine. Not panicking, not the end of the world, but it's a common, common problem, especially after a lot of rain. But I want to show you something. Sweet surprise. I went to the farmer's market this afternoon. We have a Friday farmer's market. And look. Look at this cauliflower I picked up for $4. It's as big as my head. It's as big as my head. Isn't this gorgeous? This is why I'm not growing cauliflowers because I don't have to because this farm in Troy, Maine knows what they're doing. Four bucks. So my favorite way, and David's favorite way of preparing these, cut them up, throw them in a Ziploc, a little olive oil, stick them in uh, the oven about 475 and just roast this baby. And um, it comes out, they're like popcorn, just pop it in your mouth. That's what we're having this weekend. All right, so I hope you had a great week and I hope you have a great weekend. Let me know how your gardens are going and growing and thanks for hanging out with me in my main gardens and we'll talk soon.